and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant me to serve him in his wife to the glory of your name. Amen. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song we praise our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. And may Christ your light have adorn our hearts, as well for you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The night has passed, the daylight is open before us. Let us pray with our hearts and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so with our light in your presence, O oh God, so our hearts are fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Another hymn now, um, which you can sing as loud as you want um, when you're at home. I'm afraid you can just hum along to the end. And we're building a people of power. <laughs>
The reading is taken from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 5.1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. And this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what we can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that it is the earthly tent we live in is, in is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Say together the whole of the Psalm 130 as it's on your sheets or will be up here. And together we say, Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done in this, O Lord, who would stand? But there is forgiveness with you. So that you should not be here. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the night watch for the morning, more than the night watch for the morning. O oh Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, with him is plenty of redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all her sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Well, that was a hymn while thinking about our lives. Take my life and let it be.
our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. And the crowd came together again, so they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, but people were saying, He's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, a man of rulers of demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, and whoever loves blasphemes they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never be forgiven, but is guilty of eternal sin. For they have said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him, and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my brother and my mother are my brothers? And looking at those who sat around, he said, Here are my brother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be deceased. Well, we're now into the longest season of the church. The season of Trinity, or some people call it ordinary time. And that's why we've all gone green. Green for growth, though. This is a time when we can grow. And we think about Gospels in each year, and this year we're thinking about Mark's Gospel and John's Gospel. And last week we had from John chapter 3, famous verses, of God's soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. The verse is spread far and wide. And also Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. So some famous verses in John chapter 3. And in Mark chapter 3, it's amazing. In chapter 3 of Mark, so we've already seen Jesus' birth and baptism. His temptation in the wilderness. The calling of Simon and Andrew. Lots of healings. His first preaching to her. The call of Matthew. Understanding the reason for fasting. And the Sabbath. More healing. And the calling of the remaining twelve, which is in our just before the reading we've had today. So lots happens in Mark. I like Mark's Gospel because he gets on with it as well. I like John's Gospel as well for the wonderful words and things like John 3.16 that are in that. But Mark's Gospel, you could actually read the whole of Mark's Gospel at one go if you're good at reading. And so chapter 3 and then we move on to our verses today. And it picks up Jesus of Obviously, now his message is spreading wide, and he comes home for the first time. And he goes back to Nazareth, and he goes into a home. We don't know whether it's his own home or whose home it is, but obviously his mother and brothers weren't there. But the 
Sadducees and Pharisees are there, a man saying that Jesus is Mark. That he's trying to heal people by the power of Satan. But he's a liar. Lots of things are now coming up against Jesus. Things have been said against him. And C.S. Lewis famously said that Jesus was, was either a lunatic, a liar, or the Lord. And then his book continues to argue solidly that Jesus was not loony, nor lying. And we have to make that decision as well. We have to decide who is Jesus. Is he a lunatic? Like the Pharisees were trying to say? Or a liar? Like people were trying to pick up on him? Or is he the Lord, our Saviour? Is he that? Now hopefully, all those that are here this morning, it's good to see a few more here as well this morning, believe that Jesus is our Lord. That he died for our sins and he rose again. And at that point we become part of God's family. We join into God's family when we become Christians. When we commit our lives to him. When we commit our lives to Jesus, accepting that he died for our sins, but that he rose again so that we can have new life. So we become brothers and sisters of Christ. And that's what Jesus moves on to as he moves through. I lost a slide, never mind. He seems to move through things and we become a family. We need to become Jesus' family. And in this passage in the Gospel reading, you can take home with you and study it in more detail. His mum and dad, his mum and brothers are outside and they're worried about Jesus and what he's been doing. They've heard rumours and they try to get him out, try to get him away. But Jesus says, Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. And that is what we need to be doing. We need to be doing the will of God so that we can then be part of the family. And there today. Amen. So let's stand to affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is made. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God. The He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let's love one another in silent peace.
On this first Sunday after Trinity, let us pray together in the presence of God. Let us give thanks today for the diverse spiritual journeys we each make that lead to our journey joining together as one in prayer and praise to celebrate our Heavenly Father. We give thanks for the church throughout the world and pray for our own church, the United Benefice and our friends from the URC. We especially pray for our rector Susan C, Helen Associate Priest, Martin our lay minister and Andrew our church warden. We pray for Andrew Craven, the Open Saints leader and the children and pray for Mr. Bowden, St. Luke's School Headmaster, and the staff and children. Lord, hear us. We pray for our government and all who may have difficult decisions to make. Pray for our Queen in her 95th year and the royal family. We give thanks for the emergency services, especially the NHS, and give thanks for all who bring help and relief to the hungry, homeless, and destitute. We also pray for all who are in pain or distress, and all who are in hospital or the hospice. Lord, hear us. Lord, encourage us to be ever mindful of climate change. Give us a sense of urgency, for whilst we think about it, others live with it, with its devastating effects, and families are uprooted and livelihoods destroyed. Lord, hear us. We pray for the Mother's Union throughout the world, especially this week for our members in South Sudan, Kenya, Nigeria, Canada, India, Hereford, Australia, Thailand, Madagascar, Tanzania, and Uganda. Lord, hear us. We pray for the beauty of God's world and that we will all be responsible and concerned about protecting our environment by reducing our carbon emissions. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for peace in all the troublesome areas in the world, especially in India and the Holy Land. Lord, hear us. In our church community, we remember those who are not as young or as strong as they once were, especially Mary and those known personally to us. We continue to lift up those who need healing. Michael, Jeff and Dorothy, Julia, Pat, William, Daphne, Ronnie, Betty, Moya, and Tony. May they feel the healing power of Jesus. And we pray RIP for Delia Martindale and pray for all her families and friends at this difficult time. In our village, we pray for all those who live on Throstle Walk and Lawson Gardens. Lord, hear us. Lord, Be with us, Lord Jesus, in all that we do, and help us to spread your love and peace to others. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
truth, help us to keep your love, your law of love, and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. <coughs> and gathering our prayers and praise to one. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. few notices to um, all of our services. Um, if anybody would like to help the live school, we've got Stephen up there today, <coughs> so that's good. An extra body there to give Andrew a little bit of respite from streaming. Because it's not easy streaming, because you have to think about lots of other things as well. Um, although you're not doing a lot, <coughs> you're sort of there and doing things. So you can't concentrate so much on the service. So if there are other people that could think they could just just do it on their phone, which is the easiest way of doing it, but you're still sort of thinking a bit and give Andrew a little bit more respite so that he can worship easier. And hopefully we will be still, even if things happen as they're supposed to happen on the 21st, we will still be live streaming. We'll still be sending out our service to anybody in the world that can watch it. <coughs> a bit frightening, that really, never mind. So let's, if anybody fancies they can hit a phone to do, do it, that would be good. Or Andrew will try and show them how to work a little bit extra as he does. And the church flowers, there's a notice. Thank you to them, isn't it? It's all more inside now. Yeah. So there's also the back there about church flowers, so if you'd like to do any of the church flowers for a Sunday, then please sign that form. And thank you to, to all those who didn't help out the guard. The guard comes, I had a little wander around the guard when I came this morning, just to appreciate the people that have <coughs> done stuff yesterday, yesterday afternoon. Thank you to them who are here and the cutting the lawns for next week. We're going to sing our final hymn now, which is You Shall Go Out With Joy.
that's him that we can clap him. So let's say our last in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples, to move with business, to grow leaders, and inspire children and young people. Give us eyes to see your vision, ears to hear the promise of your spirit, and courage to follow in the footsteps of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. So go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Amen.